This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather there, there, it's Jeff Curdob, and welcome to another Sports Catastrophe Birthday Boy and the Birthday Boy for today. November the 18th is a sports agent who used to play Major League Baseball for two decades, but with eight different teams. He's now 53 years old. He played right field and left field primarily. He played for eight teams in his end. Um, MLB career. He was even a first round pick in the 1986 baseball draft. And was, and is the only player in history to record 100 RBIs in a season for five different teams. And is even the nephew of Dwight Gooden, which is weird how, you know, the nephew of one um, MLB major league player could actually face him in stuff like that. Well, he is Gary Sheffield. Mr. Sheffield. So anyway, Gary Sheffield was part of the 1980. He was part of the 1980 Little League team that went to the Little League World Series and actually ended up second place to Taiwan. Anyway, Sheffield was huge in prep school. He would be drafted with the sixth pick of the 1986 MLB draft. The draft was actually stacked with some players. Pittsburgh took Jeff King first overall from the University of Arkansas. Sui! Jeff King wasn't that bad of a player for the Pirates. Cleveland took Greg, Greg Swindell. But he was more of a relief pitcher. Matt Williams was taken by San Francisco at third base. And Matt Williams was a pretty good player. Kevin Brown was drafted fourth when he went to Texas. He was a good player. Not just for Texas, but for Florida and Los Angeles, too. Kent Merker went fifth from the Braves. So that was good. And then Gary Sheffield was picked sixth. That's not bad. The first six picks weren't that bad. Sheffield almost went to Miami to play for the Hurricanes. College baseball. He was in the minor leagues for the Brew Crew and all that. He wanted to play shortstop. He he was moved to third base. Bill Spires was, you know, the shortstop. Sheffield was moved to third base, and he, well, Sheffield criticized the team, saying there was a black and white issue. Anyway, he wasn't that. Good. Until Don Baylor was made hitting coach of the Brewers, and then he started hitting better. All that. Sheffield Waters played shortstop. It was angry Bill Spires was playing shortstop. He kept thinking the Brewers organization was racist. Unfortunately, his attitude really screwed him up, and he kind of got lucky. He got a trade. The Brewers decided to trade him to San Diego for Ricky Bones, Jose Valentin, and Matt Miski. Jose Valentin would basically run the shortstop show for Milwaukee and the White Sox afterwards. Matt Miski. So after four years in Milwaukee, he just sucked in all that. However, the trade was actually pretty good. Because in 92, he actually was an all-star, and he almost got the Triple Crown. He missed out on the home run race by two, ironically, to his Padres teammate, Fred McGriff. He was nine short of the RBI's title, set by Darren Dalton, but he did win the batting title. Nine times the Padres have a batting, had a batting champion, but... Sheffields was the only time that the guy was not 21. Sheffield was batting pretty well, and then for some reason he was traded to Florida. I don't know if he made some bad moves with San Diego and all that, but the trade to Florida was the trade for Trevor Hoffman, which I talked about in my Trevor Hoffman on this um, birthday boy thing. A lot of people say, well, who won the trade? I say San Diego kind of won the trade. Because Hoffman stayed for many years 
longer than Sheffield was for the Marlins. Anyway, Sheffield played third base for the National League in the All-Star game and did pretty well. He got a four-year deal that made him stay at third base. But during the 94 season, the Marlins decided to move him to right field. Despite all that, he did hit 42 home runs in 1996 and helped the Marlins win the 1997 World Series. He was still pretty good and all that. Unfortunately, Sheffield was traded away by the Marlins in 98. Kind of one of the big bits of the whole fire sale the Marlins had. They won the World Series in 97 and then they couldn't pay their players. All that. The Marlins allegedly could not afford a contract extension. So the Marlins traded him alongside Charles Johnson, Bobby Bonilla, Jim Eisenreich, members of the 97 squad that did pretty good, to the Dodgers for Mike Diazza and Todd Seal. Seal would play lots of with lots of teams still too, more than Sheffield. And Mike Piazza was traded to the Marlins for eight days. And then Piazza was shipped off to the Mets. So anyway, Sheffield did okay. And he stayed for three and a half years with the Dodgers, hitting 129 home runs, 367 RBIs. He was a pretty good outfielder. Unfortunately, he was not happy with the organization because the Dodgers were spending their money stupidly and sliding in the wrong direction. He got his wish January 2002. He was traded to the Atlanta Braves for Brian Jordan and a pair of nobodies. He was spent two years with the Braves doing pretty well for himself and became a free agent at the end of the 2003 season. He signed a three-year $39 million deal with the New York Yankees. Of course he did. So he would join the line, Yankee lineup. And it would be huge and all that. Sheffield did pretty well in his first year as a Blue Jay. Hitting 290 with 36 home runs, 121 RBIs. And guys, 400 home run off of Michael Nakamura of the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays had a guy named Michael Nakamura? Huh. Anyway, he took second in MVP voting behind Vladdy Guerrero, who was in his first season with the Angels. He still hit pretty well. Unfortunately, Sheffield had an injury rule in 2006 and couldn't come back till late September and lost his right field job to Bobby Abreu. Sheffield would play first base for a while, and the Yankees decided to pick up Sheffield's option and, and trade him to the Tigers for three minor leaguers. Sheffield signed a two-year deal with the Tigers and did pretty well for himself. In the 2007 season, he stole 20 bases for the first time since 1990. And also had 20 home runs, so he had a 2020 season. One of six batters in the AL to do that. Sheffield allegedly hit the 250,000 250, regular season home run in Major League history, including the BaseballReference.com. Sheffield ended the 2008 season with 499 home runs. In his career. It's like, what the hell? It's like, well, when will he get to 500? But the Tigers decided to release him before the 2009 season. It's like, what the hell? They wanted more first to tell you with the DH position. Like, the guy, you couldn't just get rid of him after his 500 home run. Anyway, Sheffield decided to sign with the Mets. And two weeks after that, he hit his 500 home run against the Brew Crew, becoming the 25th player in MLB history to do so. The first as a pinch hitter when he got a 500 home run as a pinch hitter and the first to do so in a Mets uniform. He would actually be the third player in Major League history joining Ty Cobb and Rossi Stubb. Some of those players who hit home runs before the age of 20 and after the age of 40. Although Alex Rodriguez would do so as well. Sheffield decided to retire. But he won the National League Batting Crown in 92. He won the World Series in 97. So he was a superstar in a sense. You know, he went to the 1980 Little League World Series, which was nice. Um, he tied Paul O'Neill for the oldest player to hit 20 home runs 
and steal 20 bases in a season. At age 38 in 2007, first player to hit 25 home runs for six teams. Holds the record for most MLB parts played in, 51. It's pretty good. He's not in the Hall of Fame. He got eligible in 2015 after retire well, five years after his retirement. His support now up to 40.6% as the 2021. So, well, that was the seventh time out. Maybe you might do it. All that. Anyway, Sheffield had a lot of issues, especially with the Latin community. There are more Latin players than African American players because Latinos are easier to control. Sheffield even said that Tory, Joe Torrey, when he was with the Yankees, would treat black players differently than white players, which is wrong. Anyway, there were steroids allegations about Sheffield and all of that. So Sheffield had three sons with his, his wife. Well, his current wife. He has four other children from previous relationships. So, all right. I can see that. Gary Sheffield being a very smart player and all that. And playing for several teams and getting home runs with them. And producing. That's all you got to do in this world. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.